A and IS level mathematics. Lesson 26, Calculus Part 4, Integration. We're going to be looking at what is integration and some examples of integration. Let's look at a familiar process in mathematics. Expand these brackets. So we multiply both the terms by both the terms in this bracket. x multiplied by x. And then x multiplied by the minus 5. And then the plus 3 multiplied by the x. And then the plus 3 multiplied by the minus 5. Simplifying by making the two middle terms minus 2x. That process is called multiplying out the brackets, expanding the brackets. Then we have a complete reverse process called factorise. So we take the expression and we think to ourselves what numbers multiply together to give you minus 15 and add together to give you minus 2. And we come to the conclusion of plus 3 and minus 5. All I'm illustrating here is in mathematics we learn to do a process and we learn to do the reverse process, sometimes called the inverse process. Well, this is the same. Differentiation, integration. Integration is the reverse process of differentiation. So let's have a look at that. Differentiate the following. So I look at this equation. I work out dy dx, and that's called differentiating. We go 4 times 5, or 5 times 4. We drop that down by 1 power. We do 3 times the plus 7. We drop the 3 down by 1 power. We do 2 times minus 3, and we drop that down by 1 power. And we differentiate a number, and the number disappears. This is called differentiation. We differentiate. The reverse process is to integrate. So if I start with this, and I integrate it, I want to get back to that. So just think what we did here. We did 5 times 4, and drop that by 1 power. So if I do the complete reverse, and raise that, by 1 power and divide by that new power, raise that by 1 power and divide by the new power, little 1 up there, let's put it back in, raise that by 1 power and divide by that new power. That's integration. We all simplify fractions, so that will cancel to 5, that will cancel to 7, and that will cancel to 3. So I've got this back again. Well, almost. I haven't got the number back. So when we integrate, we can't get the number back. Well, not at this stage. We need to be given some uh, extra information. So when we integrate, we can't get the number back unless we've got some extra information. But we do have to show there is a likelihood of a number at the end. So we put plus C. That's called a constant of integration. So when we integrate, we need to end up with plus C, the constant of integration, because we think to ourselves, yes, there's likely to be a number at the end there. I mean, it could actually be naught, but we don't know. Not unless we're told some additional information. Now let's look at writing integration. We've already seen how to write differentiation. If y equals this, then dy dx equals 4 times 6, drop the 4 by 1 power, 2 times 4, drop the 2 by 1 power and we get a 1, differentiate 3x, and the x we say disappears, and so does the 8. But that's how we write differentiation. y equals that equation, then dy dx equals this equation. 
how do we write integration? Well, integration has got its own special sign. It looks like an elongated S. So if dy dx equals this, then y will equal this integrated. In other words, reversing the process. And this is how we write it. dy dx equals this, therefore y will equal this integrated. We also have to put at the end dx. That is saying integrate with respect to x. All you need to know is that that letter must be the same as whatever letter is being used there. And it's good punctuation to put dx there. Also good punctuation is putting a bracket round there. OK, let's do this integration. It's the reverse process of differentiation. So we raise that by one power and divide by the new power. Think of this little one there. x to the power 1 is x. Raise that by one power and divide by the new power. Now let's have a look at this 3. 3 is the same as 3 multiplied by 1. And you can think of 1 as being anything raised to the power 0. So 3 actually does equal 3x to the power 0. So if we're going to integrate this, we raise that by 1 power and divide by that new power. That's what actually happens. But if you like, you can think to yourself, when I integrate a number, the x comes back. Because when we differentiated, the x disappeared. So when we integrate, the x comes back. But that is what is actually happening. We're raising that by one power and dividing by that power. But let's not forget, we can't get the number back. So we need to put plus c, the constant of integration. I should write another line cancelling this to 6 brings me back to that. Cancelling this to 4 brings me back to that. So this is called an integral sign. It tells us to integrate. So these are integration questions. I'm being told by this integral sign to integrate 4x squared with respect to x. So I raise that by one power and divide by that power, plus a constant of integration. You can write the answer other ways. You could write the answer like that. You don't have to use the letter C. You could lose any letter you like. But we usually use C, or sometimes people use K. It's up to you. Let's integrate this expression. Raise that by one power. Divide by that power. Raise that by one power. Divide by that power. There's a little one there. Raise that by one power. Divide by the new power. If we integrate a number, well, let's just say the x comes back. We can simplify this part as 5. We can write these two parts different. I do always think we need to be used to seeing the same answer written different ways. So that could be written as a third x cubed minus 5x squared plus 4x. An integral sign telling us to integrate. So 